for the gallows A dead man walking To love came calling Rise up Rise up Rise up Rise up Six feet under joining us it's so great to be here with you online we <laughs> hope everybody is staying safe and healthy and everybody is doing well um, we have some other ways that we would love to connect with you during this time yeah our uh, kids ministry is fully online so please check that out if you have little ones uh, we also actually have two new small groups that are going to be starting up uh, so here's a bit more info on that have you ever felt like a square peg in a round hole over the next six weeks, we want to be able to offer you a course called Network, which will enable you to discover your spiritual gifts so that you will be able to serve God more effectively. It will be offered on Sunday nights starting May the 10th for one hour online. We have the openings for 10 people who would like to sign up, and we would encourage you to do so. My name is David, and I'll be your host as we go through this journey together. Hi everyone. I suspect that as parents, those of you who are parents and have children in your home, uh, your parenting skills are being maxed out and taxed uh, through this season. And uh, Wanda and I want to invite you to join us for a new small group, a virtual small group, starting on May 4th, Monday night, to explore together what it means to be parents uh, through this season, but not only through this season, uh, from th through this season and beyond. And we have some things that we think will be helpful for you and we want to encourage each other and have great discussion. Uh, one is going to give you some details as to when we're meeting and how to connect. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're going to give the virtual Zoom, Zoom, Zoom thing a try and uh, come on and join us on May 4th at 8 o'clock. Uh, I'm not sure how long these sessions are going, maybe five, six weeks. We'll see how much material there is and how much interest there is. Uh, but we'd love to meet with you and encourage you in this season of your life as mom or dad or mom and dad, whatever your scenario is. You can reach out and let us know that you're interested. You can contact me at bruce at parispress.ca and we'll be sending some material out ahead of time to kind of guide our conversation, but please join us. So hopefully you would consider joining one of these two groups. If you'd like any more information or if you do want to register, you can send an email to contact at parispres.ca. Yeah, and we've also started a brand new YouTube channel uh, with some youth videos on there. So we're periodically uploading new videos uh, with little devotionals and other things. Uh, hopefully you can head out, check out that channel. And uh, we've got some comments going on. On our first video, we actually have a vote going on uh, but what should happen with my beard, you may have noticed it's gotten a little bit longer since this all began and uh, it may continue to do so until this is over depending on how the vote goes. Uh, so head over there and check that out. Uh, but in the meantime, let's get things over to Wanda and get the party started. Hi everyone, so glad you could join us again this week. We're going to take a few moments to celebrate Jesus. This is all about joy. And uh, we've got a special surprise for some of the kids out there today. The first song especially is for you. So have some fun. Get your parents to have some fun with you. And uh, also, I just want to give a quick shout out to Ashton. Thanks so much for throwing in some extra things in the music this week. Let's take some time now and worship God.
it's, uh, it's great to have you uh, joining us. It was great to see uh, Jonathan and his uh, lovely family, uh, Brittany and Estelle, joining us on the welcome. I don't know about you, but I was, I was mesmerized by that beard. I haven't seen Jonathan in, in over a month, obviously, and that bad boy is definitely starting to grow. Um, if, if you want my personal vote, Jonathan, I say you go Duck Dynasty style, like just grow the sucker out. And then when we all come back together in person, uh, maybe have the youth come and help you uh, shave it off. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of you have different opinions on this. If you're on the YouTube chat room, uh, feel free to comment. We'll make sure to let Jonathan know. If you're not, you want to post it on Facebook. Uh, we will get all this information back to him and then tell you what the results are going to be. And maybe we can go on like a Jonathan beard watching sort of, uh, of tour. Um, but it's great you're with us. Uh, I realize that there's so many people tracking from different places. Uh, from Paris, from Brant County, Brantford, um, across the region, across the province, even across the country, and even some people uh, from abroad. And so we just want to welcome you and say thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, continue to, to walk with us uh, in the midst of all uh, that is happening. Now, one thing I realize is that we're all in different places. Uh, we're all in, in somewhat different circumstances and situations. Um, we're all probably different different ages, obviously. And for some of us, we're probably at different places where it comes to faith and belief uh, with regards to Jesus and, and the Bible and, and what faith really looks like. But I think the one thing that I'm sure regardless of what you believe, we can all agree on is we all want joy in our life. I, I doubt highly that there's anyone sitting at home being like, no, I disagree. I want to be a curmudgeon. I want to be grumpy. I, I, I just want to be awful in the midst of life. We, we all want joy. And so perhaps the, the more important question is, where do we find joy? Well, that's the question that we're going we're gonna to continue to unpack in the coming weeks as we continue in our series called Finding Joy. Uh, if you weren't with us last week, we actually started it by jumping into the Bible. And looking at a particular letter that was written 2,000 years ago by a very devoted follower of Jesus, a guy by the name of Paul. And he's writing to a group of Christians, uh, people who are close to him um, in the city of Philippi. And what's interesting is that Paul is writing this letter in the midst of incredibly difficult circumstances. He's separated from the people that are dear to him. He's actually sitting in jail, awaiting trial, not knowing what the circumstances are going to be. And it's here that he writes this very intimate and personal letter to, to friends, to, to fellow followers of Jesus. And if you were to summarize this letter with one theme, it would be the theme of joy. Which, if you think about it, almost seems to be a bit of a disconnect. Because things are not going well for him. And I'm sure for, for many of us, oftentimes we attach joy to circumstances, to situations, to, to people, to, to things that are going well. And that's why it's so fascinating last week to, to look at what Paul's perspective was. That in the midst of life, I don't disagree for a moment. And it was great to kind of get feedback from a number of people through texts and, and email and even Facebook posts about what brings us joy. But what I so appreciate about what Paul has to say in this letter to the Philippians is that in the midst of life when things are not going well, when the external circumstances are not going our way, can we still find joy? And for Paul, he did. And that's why he started to write this letter to these Christians in Philippi. That joy for him was ultimately not found in what was happening to him, but rather in knowing that God was with him. And to push it even further, in knowing that God was with him and was at work in the midst of these difficult circumstances. And so that's where we kind of left off last week. If you didn't catch last week, jump back onto our YouTube page and, and you can track with us and, and follow kind of at your own pace and schedule. But this week, we want to just continue in that journey and ask the question of, okay, listen, if, if I hold to this line of thinking and I believe that joy ultimately is found in Jesus, does it end there? For Paul, his answer would be no. That, that this belief now needs to begin to shape behavior. And so that's where we're going to jump in here uh, today. But before we do, let me ask you a question. Uh, raise your hand if you like good surprises. That was actually a little bit of a test. I have no idea who raised their hand. Maybe you're sitting next to the person on the couch and be like, like seriously, don't, don't raise your hand. He can't see you. Either, either way, who likes good surprises? Not, 
not bad surprises, not like your kids creeping around the corner ready to scare you at a moment's notice, not, not, not bad surprises where you open up a, a, a shelf and, and instead of finding the food you want, there's a bunch of ants anywhere. No, nobody likes those kind of surprises, but good small surprises. Like for example, you know, you haven't worn a pair of pants in a little while and you put them on and you reach into the pocket and you find five bucks, right? And you're like, oh, that's, that's awesome. Just a, a little bit of joy and happiness. Or, or maybe you haven't heard from a friend in a while and suddenly they, out of the blue, they drop you a text or an email or even better, they actually call you up. And, and it brings a real sense of joy from an unexpected place. Well, that's where we're going to go this morning is when we start to believe that joy is found in Jesus, that the joy can often be found in some of these small, unexpected places. And so we're going to jump back into uh, the passage in the book of Philippians. If you have a Bible and you want to kind of read your own version, uh, totally cool. If not, uh, we're going to put the, uh, the words up on the screen and you can follow along. But we're jumping into Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. And Paul says this, If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete. By being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. We're going to pause there for a moment because Paul is, is making this very distinct reality. And what he's saying is, listen, if, if you believe in Jesus, if, if you believe that this is what begins to shape your joy, then there's going to be a behavior that begins to follow. And if I were to summarize all of what Paul has to say next in what we refer to as chapter two, it's the element of humility. Now, just think about for a moment, have, have you ever equated joy with humility? It it may seem a little unexpected, but we pick it up in verse 3 when Paul says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Basically, don't, don't make it all about you. He says, but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. For each of you should look not only to your own interests, but to the interests of others. And so, how does humility begin to bring joy in the midst of life? But maybe before we even go there, the question we start to ask is, is how do we develop humility even in our lives? Because I don't know about you, but I, I so admire humility in others. It, it's absolutely a, a trait that I desire more of in my own life. But, but humility can be one of those traits that, that, that is hard to get into you, isn't it? That, that, that we want it in our lives, but, but it can be such a struggle. If I was thinking of an analogy, I would think that, that humility is almost like, like swimming against the current, going, going upstream. Uh, I was uh, thinking of, uh, of summertime and of, and of warmer weather. And in our house, we have this uh, above ground pool. An above ground pool, it's about three and a half feet uh, deep. And so, you know, most people can walk around in it. And one of the great games we play is, is we play this game um, called Whirlpool. And you get a whole bunch of people in the pool and you start walking around the outer edge of the pool and you create this current. And after about a minute and a half, two minutes, you stop and you yell switch and you try to swim against the current. And it's a ton of fun, especially if you have little kids because they just get pulled right away in the same direction that they are going to. And, and, and what's, what, what I think about this is that it is hard to go against the current. It is, it, it, it's easy to kind of go with the flow. And I think Paul is onto something here when he speaks about finding joy through elements of being humble. Because we live in a culture that, although admires humility, doesn't really promote humility, does it? It's, it's always about kind of promote yourself. I mean, get, get your face out in front of things. Make, make sure you promote, you promote, you promote. You know, you know, make yourself look great. You know, greatness comes from those who serve 
you. So, so many places we could turn to, but I think one of the great examples I know in, in my life where it's a struggle to be humble is when it comes to social media. And it works in kind of a, a two-stage approach. One is we, we put stuff out there, kind of putting our best foot forward, which let's be honest, who we present on social media is not often who we actually are. Sure, it's a glimpse of us, but it's a glimpse of us in our best moments of life. But then what do we do? We then go back and see, well, I've posted this on Facebook or, or Instagram. And then how many likes do I have? How many shares do I have? How many like happy emojis do I have? How many thumbs up do I have? And suddenly our sense of joy comes not in, in who we are, but it's based upon what other people think of us. And I think when it comes to being humble, This is one of the challenges that we face, that we are swimming upstream. We we, we are fighting against that natural desire to seek the applause of others. And for many people, that is a real sense of where they find joy. They want the applause of others. They want the appreciation of others. And, And I get it. But if that's the sole purpose of our joy, It's going to begin to to create a a vacuum that is just going to require more and more and more in order for it to fully be filled. And so how do we respond in a different way? How do we allow this reality of joy in Jesus that, that makes us humble and focus less upon ourselves become a reality? Let's jump back into this passage again, continuing with verse 5. When Paul says, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, taking being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. Now, there is a lot in that passage. We we can't touch on it all here today. And so maybe later this week or maybe later this day, you can kind of continue to go back to this and and just allow it to to begin to, to sink in. But what we start to see is Paul reminding us again that, that one of the incredible things that Jesus did for us is in humbling himself and becoming obedient to death, going to the cross for you and for me. And what that begins to speak to me about is again this incredible reality of of all that God has done for us. That that our joy is is found not in the applause of others. Our joy ultimately should not be found in, in the things that we accomplish, but rather in what Jesus has done for us. I, I, I don't can't say this enough, but the sense of knowing what Jesus has done outmatches anything that anything we could possibly ever do. And it's through this element of humility that that we begin to, to focus again upon what Jesus has done for us. Of trying to stop impressing others or or even trying to impress God. Because let's be honest, Sometimes we may talk a lot about our belief in Jesus, but then our ultimate joy comes in in just trying to impress God or impress others. But if you you jump back into Jesus' ministry, you see over and over and over again, he's like, "Don't, don't become too impressed by your religious rituals, right? Because what God wants is not, 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 not a religion that we learn, but rather a relationship that we live. And so Jesus says, listen, when you pray, don't... Don't be like the people who babble and go on and on and on and go out into the streets and and let everyone know how eloquent their words are. He's like, go home, 
in a room and just talk to your heavenly father. Or another place, Jesus says, listen, don't, when you give, don't, don't announce it. Don't, don't, don't show these grandiose gestures, but, but rather do it in such a way that nobody even notices. Jesus is telling us all of this for a reason, because he doesn't want us to seek our joy in the applause of others, but ultimately in him. That ultimately everything that we do is not as a way to impress others or impress God, but it's in response to what Jesus has done for you and for me. And what I start to notice in my life is that when my joy is found in Jesus, when I begin to, to, to allow humility to take more a grip on my heart, I start to experience joy in some of the most unexpected ways. And so what are, what are a couple things that, that we can do? So that this is not just simply advice that I'm giving, but, but rather uh, something that we can start to live through. The first place that I start with is just admit the struggle. Be open, be honest, and say, you know what? Uh, th this is a struggle. This, this is difficult. Yeah, I get it. When I post things on Facebook, when, when we upload this to, to YouTube, uh, there is a real big part of me that's like, how many views? How long did people view? What are the analytics, right? And then pulling back and say, ultimately, listen, listen, this is not what it is all about. It's about sharing the joy of Jesus with others. And so just simply admit it's a struggle. And don't, don't beat yourself up over it, but, but allow it to be a place to, to bring you back to a place of saying, Jesus, I want to focus more on you. I want to focus more upon others. Second thing I would suggest is understand that oftentimes humble steps begin in small ways. It's, it's not in, in the grand gestures that we want to make, but it's in the small subtle ways that that God again gets hold of our life. I had a an experience this Tuesday uh, that I can now look back on and uh, laugh at myself is is really how I define. Uh, Tuesday I was working on my message, working on what I was going to share here today with all of you. And I was downstairs in the basement and then Isaac my oldest comes down and and Tuesday um, is, is garbage day and, and recycling day for us in Paris. And if you remember in Tuesday, it was, it was not a spring day. It was like snowing. Uh, it was windy. It was just nasty out there. And Isaac comes down and he's like, dad, dad, there's garbage everywhere. Now, sometimes kids like to exaggerate. Um, unfortunately, on this point, Isaac wasn't exaggerating. You see, where we live is we live near the end of the street and there's a park right next to us. And so our, our driveway, which is fairly long, is separated by a chain link fence. And I go up and the view out the window is all this paper blown up against our fence and then boxes and paper and junk into the park all the way across the baseball diamond up against the home run fence. And you know what this humble hearted pastor's first thought was? Who didn't secure the recycling on my street? Now I'm having to deal with everyone else's junk, literally, right? Yeah, real good response. So I go out and notice suddenly, no, no one's junk but my own. I don't know if you remember, but last week I said I'm going to start cleaning out my garage. Well, I did. And I had extra recycling this week. Yay me. Thanks for the wind. And so all my recycling is absolutely everywhere. It's, it's a yard sale in the worst way. And, and, and so I'm thinking, what, what, what am I going to do? What, this, this is ridiculous. I, I've got, I'm trying to prepare to talk to people about joy. I'm trying to talk to people about being humble. I don't have time for this junk. And I thought, okay, I'm going to start to clean up my yard. And so I started to clean up my yard. And then I glanced over and was reminded again at all the stuff in the park. And my initial response is, ah. Someone else can do it, right? Someone else will clean it up. And it's in that moment that it's as if God shoved me from behind and was like, really? You, you've been thinking about humility. You've been wanting to tell others about joy. 
and, and you're just going to leave this to someone else, who do you think you are? And, and it wasn't like one of those like coming at me hard nudges. It was almost brought me to a place of, of laughter, of realizing, yeah, this is unbelievable. You know, it's not looking for the big moments. It's the small things. And so I gathered up my recycling and put it back in and walked through the park and started to, to grab the paper and everything else and, and gathered in and, and brought it back. And it was a moment where God almost kind of refocused me again. And is like, look for the small things. Look, look for the little ways in order to serve. And that one moment almost kind of reoriented me for the rest of the week. As I began to think, what, what are some other ways that, that I can serve? What, what are some other ways that I can focus less upon why should I do this as opposed to, look, I have the opportunity to do this. I realize we're in a difficult season right now. But in the midst of this, can we allow God to surprise us with joy? I believe it begins when we put our focus upon him. When we begin to, to honestly try to, to become more humble in terms of how we live life, focusing less upon ourselves and focusing more upon others. I know we're at home. I know we don't have a ton of opportunities within our own community. But I'm convinced that this week, there'll be opportunities for us to serve in small ways. There's going to be opportunities for us to serve in a way that think, well, wait a second, I, I'm not the one who should be doing this. Someone else should do this. Like someone else should unload the dishwasher. Someone else should fold the laundry. And you know what? You may be right, but you're missing the opportunity to serve someone else, to act humbly, and to experience the joy that God wants in you and also the joy that God wants through you. So this week, how are you discovering more joy in your life? How are you acting humbly in a way that says, this is, this is less about me and this is more about others? Because that is the Jesus way. And that's the way that Jesus wants us to live every day of our lives. Let's, uh, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, uh, I'm the first to admit that humility is, is often a, a struggle. That so often we, we focus less upon you and focus more upon ourselves. That too often we, we look to the applause of others to, to bring true joy into our lives. Help us to be reminded again first and foremost, of all that you have done for us, of how you came into this world not to be served, but to serve. And, and you showed that by giving your life for us. So allow that be, to be the, the example that we follow. Allow that to be the reality that we live so that everything we do is in response to you. For we ask of Jesus in your name, Amen. Well, thank you again for uh, continuing to, to join us. Uh, Wanda is going to uh, conclude with, uh, with a new song for us. Um, and then when she does, just hang on because there's one kind of more update uh, that we want to give to you. Uh, but again, thanks for being with us. And Wanda, take it away. Just
breath till that stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born Thanks for uh, hanging with us. Uh, just a quick update with regards to the announcement we made uh, regarding uh, Chuck's retirement uh, last week. Uh, session and leadership uh, met and have been thinking through this. And the decision was to bring uh, Wanda in on a temporary basis um, to handle our, our music moving forward. Uh, as many of you have seen, uh, Wanda has been a tremendous blessing for us so far. And we just continue to I look forward to, to working with her as we move forward. And so just kind of wanted to, to bring you up, up to date with, with all of that. And uh, we look forward to having you join us again. Uh, same time, same place. Uh, have a great week.